Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. South skeptical about student loan scheme. Akin to Dave Sawyer, the MD of Nail Fund, revealed that Southern students are skeptical about the student loan scheme, resulting in fewer applications from the South compared to the North, where institutions are more proactive in supporting students. Awareness efforts are being ramped up in the South to encourage participation as loan disbursement begins, with university students showing the highest demand, followed by polytechnics and colleges of education. Sawyer explained that the private institutions are excluded from the scheme due to their higher fees, which, which would exceed the program's financial capacity. NANS President Loki Imonife praised the scheme as a new dawn for the education sector, highlighting its accessibility to all students, regardless of background and its potential to combat poverty. Joining us this morning on the program is Dr. Peter Uguduro, who's an educational researcher. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure to join you. Welcome yeah. to the program. Okay. All right. So we're talking about um, the student loan scheme, and we're seeing that there is a rise in the applications in the north compared to the southern states. Now, um, I want to understand why why people in the South, because I know that the South has a lot of universities, um, there are people who are really gunning for education here, but up North, that's where you're even seeing more applications. Why is that? Well, uh, you have to know that this is this is not free money. Mm. You are going to, it's, it's, it's a loan. You are going to pay it back. Uh, if if uh, two people want to start a business and one person can pay from his, he can do the business from his savings and the other person doesn't have money at all, who do you think is will be willing to, to borrow money? Is a person who doesn't have money at all. Yeah. So we don't expect that parents who are in a position to pay for their children to go to school who want to borrow money and uh, you know have that burden uh, be on the shoulders and on the neck of the child. It, it, there's, there's, there's something um, debt does to an individual. When you sit in a classroom and you know that uh, you're you are, you are, you are, you are, you are in school on a borrowed you know, cloth, definitely you won't feel as comfortable as the person who has all the bees you know, picked up up front. So if you know Nigeria well, you should understand that uh, per capita income in the north is significantly lower than per capita income in the, in the south. So if you can afford to pay from your pocket, why do you want to borrow money, even when it's government money? It's not free money. You are under obligation to return this money when you when you graduate. So if you can do it yourself, I, I don't expect that you want to take the loan to go to school. But this begs also the question of uh, uh, of how prepared the institutions are and how they get, gather the data. As we speak, there are some institutions in the South that even though their students are willing to collect this loan, they have not been able to uh, submit the relevant data that will be needed for these people to apply for loans. So the portal has not even been opened. Yeah. So it begs the question, how prepared are they? How good are they in collecting data? And why is it that institutions in the North are said to have uh, been more prepared and uh, they are, therefore their portals are open and their students are getting the opportunity? Well, you must uh, recognize um, you know, differences in culture, differences in, in, in belief, even in the current government. You have to um, recognize that uh, indeed uh, Institutions in the in the south are also institutions that are probably uh, more uh, democratic and follow uh, due processes to to do things, and they have their reservations. Um, some of them are still battling with the idea of should should government actually uh, require students to borrow money to go to school, or should or should government take responsibility for picking up the bills for for for, for students to to go to school. We may hear about ASU and we think that ASU is monolithic. That's not true. We ASU, uh, we have we have university lecturers who are from the north. The way they look at life and the lens with which they view Nigeria is different from the view, the lens with which uh, lecturers from the south, you know, view view Nigeria. So those um, um, uh, you know geogra geographical uh, uh, differences are there, and we cannot afford to ignore them. Uh, the, most of the lecturers in the South uh, who run also universities in the South are people who believe that education is an investment and not a cost. And they think that it's government responsibility 
to uh, pick up the bills uh, that enable people, young people to go to school. Because ultimately, these young people are going to serve Nigeria. Uh, don't um, get distracted by the fact that when an individual starts working, the salary is paid into, into your account. But overall, there's hardly anybody who, who is working who you can pay fully for the service that he or she renders. So um, there are uh, philosophical uh, uh, challenges here and differences that account for some of the things we're, we're, we're seeing. And uh, uh, if we have to say everything that needs to be said, we may get into the political challenges that confront our country. And I'm not sure that I'm ready to go dabble into those, 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 those angles to the story. Yeah, but but should that be should that be the choice of the school or the choice of the parents and students that need this loan or would want mm -hmm. to apply? Shouldn't that be their own choice to make? Yes, I agree with you. Um, the institutions in the in the in the south haven't actually done enough public relations for for this for this for this particular uh, students' loan scheme. But um, if you do my kind of work, you'll be familiar with the concept of uh, locus of control. Most of the time when things don't, don't go the way we want them, we blame ordinary people. But the people who have set up the loan, the government, the Ministry of Education, and of course, uh, the students' loan, loan the, 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 the loan fund itself, uh, you know, the, the people who are running it have a responsibility to probably hire uh, appropriate communication uh, 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 experts, uh, public relations people, advertising people to create awareness using appropriate uh, communication channels to be able to reach the people who have need uh, to patronize to patronize what, what they're offering. But I must remind you again that no matter how hard we try, uh, not everybody, every student uh, going to university from the South is likely to feel uh, impressed with the current arrangement, and some of them uh, don't want to uh, their children to live with the burden of uh, having to pay back, back back money. So if they can sell something that they own to be able to send their children to school, because they realize that education truly is an investment, and if they see it as as investment for for from the uh, as a family, they want to pick up the bills themselves and not um, let their children uh, be in school and grapple with the idea that uh, they have this burden which will, uh, they have to carry for four years, I tell you. Beyond that, we also know that um, uh, overall, what you'll find is that the average student uh, in the university from the South is also uh, somebody who is uh, academically uh, speaking, higher in terms of achievement compared to students who come from the North. And it has nothing to do with intelligence. It's just the fact that given all the problems we have grappled with over the years, the North has always, you know, uh, been a laggard uh, in, in, with respect to being able to get children into school. Uh, we start looking at it from uh, the cutoff mark for children to get into secondary schools from yeah. the North compared to what, what it is for students to get into school from, from the South. So uh, if you do my kind of research, you will understand that most of the young people getting into universities from the South are actually um, coming from uh, families that are economically uh, better off. Uh, compared to uh, the people who want to go to universities from you know from 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 from, from the north and again uh, the north are still grappling with the idea that education is a necessity because you know where do we have boko haram boko haram is not is not from the south this is 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 in the north that it is uh, you know giving us a big challenge and what is boko haram that education is is not a necessity education is actually able and so uh, you have to, um, this kind of uh, uh, provision uh, becomes an incentive for people to want to go to school. But even when it is not easy for people to find money to go to school, uh, most parents and families in, this, in the South have for years known that uh, education is, is a necessary tool that you need to combat poverty, just as the president himself was mentioning when he was you know, launching the fund. And so uh, those... Um, uh, basic differences in terms of how we perceive education um, are there, uh, but uh, it, it doesn't nullify the fact that we should do more by way of promotion to get uh, parents in the north, in the south, who don't have the means to pick up the bills for their own children's education, to do to to take advantage of what the government has provided. But uh, those of us who are in the education space, we are also running a campaign to ensure that ultimately what we have to settle for is government. You know, uh, picking up the bills for children to go to school uh, because our parents are grappling with it a lot now. Uh, putting food on the table is not an easy thing to handle. 
and uh, if government sends children to school from government coffers, um, if we are not making a mistake. It's an investment in our future because if we don't get it right with education, every other thing falls apart. Yeah. So, all right. So um, let's talk about this, the government's response to all of this. How are they addressing the fact that people are skeptical, especially people from the South? They would rather go and sell their goods or maybe one of their assets to ensure that they pay for their children's fees. So how is the government trying to let them aware that, you know, you can also take this other alternative? And shouldn't we be looking at some form of subsidization when it even comes to education? If there are people who are saying, I don't want my child to be saddled with the responsibility of having to pay this um, loan back in the future. Yes, um, well, we are also too early in the day to start worrying about whether they are going to take advantage of it or not. It's going to happen uh, for people in the South. You just in the next three days, you'll we'll be very shocked to discover that um, the number of people asking for this money from the South will uh, be significantly higher than the number of people asking for the money from the North because uh, they are also the ones who are very much you know, conversant with internet and they are able to get the necessary information. So once you use the right tools to promote it, um, you will activate you know, processes that will make parents and their, and their children uh, go, go, go for this. I, 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 I suspect that in the next one month, you are likely to uh, hear the government, the same people complaining now, come back to tell you that mm -hmm. they, are, they are seeing more people than they can cope with. And that mm. is what is likely to ultimately happen. We, are, we won't be able to cope with the number of people who are going to ask for this money, especially when it's going to be available to the, the, the three levels uh, that we have in higher education, the colleges of education, polytechnics, and uh, and the university. So we should be prepared. We are bargaining for something that we, are, we, we, we can handle by asking everybody to come. We don't, I don't think we have got as much money as uh, the demand will make us want to, want to, want to provide. Okay, uh, well... Also, sorry, I was going to ask, is there no role of vocational studies in all of this? Because we're talking about, um, you know, colleges, colleges of education, polytechnics, universities. How about vocational studies? How about people who want to just learn a trade or something? Yeah, well, government government is interested in all of that, uh, but you should know that uh, in the case of Nigeria, data is a challenge. We we haven't invested in in uh, you know producing data that we can trust. So, mm -hmm. colleges of education, uh, polytechnics, and universities, as we speak, are the ones who 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 are getting close to something that you can call a robust you know database, which yeah. the government can work with. Because remember, uh, as I keep emphasizing, it's not free money. And that's why government would actually prefer those who are 80 years old to be able to take this money because so that they can, you know, be held responsible for the decision they have taken to, to borrow money to go to school. So if you if you uh, make it very democratic and everybody can access it, uh, you might not be able to trust some of the people who will eventually use this money to go to school. So you want to work with institutions that are, uh, uh, standardized, uh, you know, places in terms of database and people who, when you want your money back, you know who to, you know who to to go to, uh, to ask questions. You know who can help you to uh, call your money back. And uh, when the students are also done, uh, you know, going through tertiary education, you also have a system in place that will enable you to track them and know where. They are, they are going to colleges of education, polytechnics, and and, uh, and universities. As we speak, are the ones who have been able to get to a point where you can say, yes, um, on a good day, uh, out of every 10 people you give your money, you probably might be able to trust some, certainly not 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you were talking about the fact that um, the right tools have not been used. and More, more needs to be done in terms of uh, uh, orientation, in terms of uh, bringing this information to the people. What else has been left undone? It's been said in the media, whether social media, print media, the electronic media, and everywhere, what else was left undone that needs to be done for people to be able to key into this scheme? As a country, we have always tried to do that hard from the roof. We do not, we do not you know, pay attention to fundamentals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, you, if you want to do the right job, the smart thing to do is to promote this through secondary schools. There are counselors who work for secondary schools. So these people who are going to university are young people who have passed through secondary schools. As a researcher in the industry, most of the time when I ask children if they have, you know, uh, ever you know had the opportunity to get essential information from their school counselors, the answer I get regularly is no. Why are you trying to you know uh, do build your house from the roof? 
Go to secondary schools. There we, uh, school uh, uh, principals and school principals in Nigeria have an association. Have you involved them? They will promote it to you for you for, for free, really. So if every child passing through secondary school has been helped to get this information through the counselor in the school, you don't need to waste time talking about this in the open space. Doctor Gudoro, Doctor Gudoro, just yeah. I'm not cutting you. I'm just trying to tell you that some secondary schools, a lot of secondary schools, don't have a counselor. Yeah. So. I yeah. don't know how they, they're, they're going to do that. I just wanted to remind and you that. What you have said agrees with the evidence I have produced through research. So you are also a researcher. I'm happy that you have joined mm -hmm. my, my space. Mm -hmm. You are right. Yeah, so, but the question is, why is that so? So that, that again tells you we are building a house from the roof. So what we need, when we want to run a proper system, let's ensure that every school has a school counselor. They are the, the experts on how to guide children regarding next steps after secondary school. Yeah. So if you haven't put those kinds of systems in place and students finish and they're groping in the dark looking for how to take the next step, their parents don't know what to do, is is you don't blame the children. You blame you blame the government as the Federal Ministry of Education and, and Ministry of Education across the states who haven't recognized the indispensable place of counselors in the school system. That counselors but really, if you if you run a good counseling system, a good career management system in our country, that would take away up to 50% of the problems we are grappling in the education system. Many young people are studying the wrong courses, are, are, are in the wrong universities. Are, some yeah. of them even deserve to study on scholarship, should be able to go abroad and get, you know, have their education funded. Some of them can get education worth up to up to a billion naira. But they are not getting that because we haven't put counselors in place. And how much does it take to pay a counselor to be there? To serve to serve the interests of the children and and and, and the and the other you know education stakeholders. So uh, so let's let's please try and build a house properly. Let's lay the foundation. This should be promoted through the school system. If we don't have counselors there now, let's go through PTAs. There is a, um, there's PTA at the national level. Let's get the parents to know that this facility is available and let them go to their various PTA you know meetings at the secondary school levels and create awareness. This is not difficult at all. It doesn't, it won't take you more than a week if you if you get PTA involved, who not go to the individual schools where their members are and get the, 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 the parents to know that this facility is available for them to for them to take advantage of. But don't forget what I have just finished saying, really, that at the end of the day, maximum will be three months. I tell you, government will be telling you that they can't cope with the volume of demand coming mm. their way. Yeah, understanding the current um, economic realities, I'm sure there's so many people that want to, you know, just key into this scheme. But um, let's talk about the um, what the job market is going to be like, how it's going to affect the job market, and then even the economic prospects for these um, graduates when they are done, because they have to pay this loan back. What's it going to be like when? They finally graduate. Very, very, very challenging uh, because the kind of economy we have built over the years is not an economy that is productive. We have remained uh, uh, consumers rather than producers. So yeah. these uh, young people who are borrowing money uh, on their own personal recognition, now people who, when they graduate, will probably spend up to five years before they can get a job that pays them up to 100,000 naira. How are they mm -hmm. going to be able to pay that? Because the money they will earn, I tell you, for the first two years, uh, in paid employment, if at all the, 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 the money to get to get such jobs, may not be able to put food on the table for them and whatever families they are going to set up. Not to talk about having the money to be able to pay, you know, government back. So um, we need to uh, have appropriate conversations. Uh, we need to um, get all the stakeholders back on the table and ensure that we are building an economy that will create jobs and uh, again, the type of education we are going to provide these children who are going to get these loans, these loans, must be the education that will not be focusing on uh, when you know giving them certificates with, with which they uh, they go and look for for paid employment because those jobs are not anywhere in Nigeria. We are all aware of the open secret which tells us that many multinational corporations in our country have you know shut down or selling their selling their interests and walking away from Nigeria because uh, they don't find the place very conducive anymore. And so we must give them a different type of education, the education that will enable them to become job creators and not, you know, job hunters. And that's the only way we can get them to be able to uh, take care of themselves, put food on the table, and also have the kind of money uh, that will enable them to be able to uh, pay back the loans that they are going to borrow. But as of today, uh, looking looking forward, I, I tell you, 
uh, is, is going to be very challenging for us as a country because our population growth rate is very high. We're adding about 6 million children to this population every year. Mm. That, that, that number we're adding every year to Nigeria's population is more than the population of no, in the entire Norway, it's more than the population of the entire of the entire Finland, the, you know, the great countries that you hear about where life is significantly better. So we need to also have start having the conversation about um, our population growth rate, fertility rate. You know, my minister who is sitting in the studio, she knows that <laughs> our women are very productive. The, uh, the um, fertility, fertility rate in Nigeria is, is, is five. Mm -hmm. uh, is in United Arab Emirates, which is actually an, an Islamic nation, is just 1.3. That tells you how 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 you know backward we are in, the, in, in our thinking. If you go to a place like Kasina, fertility rate is as high as seven, and there are women who are still making as many as as 12 children, compounding these challenges that we're having. So we need to start having very fundamental conversations that will enable us to uh, nip our problems in the board. Um, if we continue to produce at the rate we are producing in terms of children, um, we won't be able to cope with the challenges ahead. Well, let's wrap it up with this uh, very briefly, please. Uh, this student loan should not be something that will be for just one tenure. What are your recommendations to make sure it is sustainable? Well, uh, this is not just a mere policy. There is a law that has put it in place, and that law has also made provision for how we are going to source the funds that will keep it going. So taxpayers' money is involved. And taxpayers' money will always come. Federal um, Inland Revenue Service is involved. A fraction of the money they make is um, going to be available to, um, to the fund uh, so that um, it, no matter how many years we want to run this, so long as we are able to collect taxes, they will get a fraction that enables them to sustain the fund. So I expect it to be sustainable. Uh, the only challenge, as usual, uh, we may have is, is corruption, where uh, mm. the wrong people may get into this place as um, you know the leaders of of of, of the of this uh, very important government agency, and they see it as uh, you know their own turn to you know to, to make money and, and uh, take their girlfriends abroad. So <laughs> if we are able to uh, use technology to put appropriate systems in place to ensure that the money gets into the hands of only the people. Who should have it? Then I, I do not uh, expect that we are going to run into big challenges. Not two, that the way it has been set up is to ensure that this money doesn't get into the hands of the children by way of cash. The money is uh, is supposed to be paid directly to the universities that uh, where they are going to study, so that we don't hear about a child taking money and not you know ending up in school. So every money paid out is money paid to the university. So it's uh, it's government's indirect way of funding the university. So rather than Taking up the responsibility of funding universities, government is saying uh, we are going to the money we used to give you before as subvention. We are we are going to still try to give it to you, but uh, in an indirect way by way of saying that that money uh, is now uh, coming to you via your student. You know, so he, that student is owing us. We are not the ones picking up the bill. So it's your responsibility to ensure that only the people who are authentic uh, members of your community uh, remain. Uh, in place, and if we discover at any point that you have uh, given us, you know, dummy statistics, dummy data, mm. then university leadership will have to be held responsible. All right. Well, we hope that the government and these educational institutions can work together to ensure that they provide a supportive environment for higher education in Nigeria. And we also hope that the government is thinking of job creation because we want that when when these kids they go to school, they come out and they can have jobs for themselves, especially if they're going to be paying back the loans. Anyways, Dr. Absolutely. Peter, we want to say thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure having a conversation with you on the program. Thank you so much. Yeah. My pleasure too. All Have right. a wonderful day, sir. So we're speaking with Dr. Peter Oguduro. He's an educational researcher. And we've just um, been talking about the Student Loan Fund and how the Southern um, students have been a little bit skeptical about it. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with us. I'll see you again tomorrow. My name is Rune Paulson. And I am Yamgul Agadi. Let's meet again tomorrow. Have an amazing day. Okay.